Uh, good morning, everybody. It's quite an honor speaking in front of you, a brewery full of knowledge and expertise in digital private privacy issues, a forum with participants shaping the digital transition. But sometimes I also meet those who believe that digitalization is something that already happened. We have compu our computers, we have our iPhones, we even have vacuum cleaners and lawn movers who are automatically clean in our homes and our gardens. They sense that digitalization is already complete. But I'm convinced that the biggest changes are still ahead of us. The greatest benefits can still be achieved and the biggest hopes can still be met. Sweden has may have the best preconditions in the world for digital transformation. Digitalization brings enormous opportunities. But as more and more public services are digitalized, vulnerability also increases. Take cyber attacks from foreign powers. That is increasing tremendously. 10,000 attacks per month from foreign states against Sweden alone. Take organized crime. The web is an increasingly used base for legal business. Online drug sales and IT fraud are growing larger and larger. If cybercrime were a country, it would have the 13th largest gross domestic product in the world. In every crime, there's, there's, there's becoming a, a digital component. Take terrorism, where extremists use online platforms to spread their propaganda faster and to a wider audience. Another growing security problem is how internet and social platforms giants exploit their positions on the market by establishing terms of use that no, order, no, order, no, uh, no ordinary person has neither time nor the possibility to read through. I guess you've seen all these examples online. One of the most famous is where at the, the, in the middle of the agreement was that the, you, you gave the company the right to the, your eternal, eternal soul. <laughs> I think there was only a handful that recognized this one. Another one was you, you could get a, a number of thousand dollars if you read this, the, the, the paragraph in the last. I think it was like two months before someone noticed that paragraph and, and claimed their, their thousands of dollars from the company. You could see the, the, the procedure where, when the GDPR come to Facebook, you could do one click to say, okay, it's okay for me. And to change anything, you had to do 12 clicks. Uh, and at the first time from Facebook, you actually said, do you want to discontinue your service or do you accept our, our conditions? So you, at, at one moment you had to choose my family pictures, my social life on media, or my integrity. <laughs> Sad enough, of course, most of them clicked on, 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 on use, still using Facebook and gave up on their integrity. This has meant that personal data has been shared and used to influence democ democratic elections. Social platforms and apps have shared data on individuals' sex lives and women's menstrual cycles. This undermines the confidence in the entire digital transition. Together, we must place much higher demands on increased privacy and simplified use of ter terms of use. Digitalization should serve citizens and democracy. It should bring people closer together. My vision is that you as an individual should own your own data and that you can choose which data you want to share. That means also that you, have, you b will be able to share on what terms you share your data. You can see it as a cabinet with a couple of drawers. Some of these drawers you want to keep to yourself. You don't want to share them with nobody. Some of these drawers, you could share it with anyone. Could be your phone number or, or your, some, some nice picture of you, uh, business-like. Some of these drawers, you can give up or share if you get paid for it or in, in exchange for a social service. 
But the baseline has to be that you own your own data. I see GDPR as a step in that direction, but I think there's more that has to be done. At the same time, as you own your own data, there must be exceptions. One of those exceptions should be, I think, the case of anonymized research databases when it comes to developing cures for serious illnesses. I think that that kind of data we need to gather, even if an one or two individuals that doesn't share that view. I say the same with the case of risk of terrorism. The law enforcement agencies must have access to some data where the public interest must take precedence. Finally, there are those who say that the power of innovation is hampered by legislation and regulations, that we will lose speed in the digitalization work with new standards and laws, that innovation and integrity are each other's opponents and opposites. It doesn't have to be that way. Today, the European Union has much tougher integrity legislation than, for example, the United States, but still performs better on innovation. I'm convinced that it's possible to use data in a way that unites the user demands for transparency and integrity, while at the same time creating new businesses and welfare benefits. But it's built on strong confidence among ordinary citizens. That you as an individual feel secure that your data is not abused or getting in the wrong hands. There lies the key to manage the digital transition. There lies the key to achieve the goal of becoming the best nation in the world in taking advantage of digitalization. And if a small country like Sweden are to handle great tasks, I think we all must work together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I stand on <laughs> the right side, sorry. <laughs> uh, very interesting talk. Um, even though I find your speech, I know I have to be kind now with <laughs> Anders here because I'm having a seat in his digital advisory board, so <laughs> I don't want to be too uncomfortable. No, no I found no your problem. speech a bit alarmistic, in a sense. Optimistic. S alarmistic. Alarmistic. Yeah. No? At least to begin with, but I was more comfortable in, in, in the end. So you know that, in my opinion, technology is not neutral, it's political. And as the Minister of the Digital Development in Sweden, how do you view these issues from a politician's perspective? What kind of power do you have and what can you encourage, except from more regulation? Because that is the easy answer. I mean... Obviously, we, we have a lot of agencies that, that can do their work, both in terms of, of uh, leading by example, by having high standards, but also uh, in, in terms of, of information to the, to the public. So I think we have a lot of, of um, means to influence the, the digital transformation. Yeah, well, that's correct. And the digitalization of the public sector in the light of data protection regulations should have the focus on protecting, protecting citizens' privacy. And still we regularly see serious incidents happening in that sector. How can we make it perfectly clear that privacy is number one priority? I think it's, it's, it's uh, we, it, I think it's clear for for our our agencies that they need to ne work with both privacy and security, but at the same time they meet uh, high demands from their users to move fast to to in, uh, enhance the user experience, and when they try to uh, meet those standards, sometimes they go wrong and does, doesn't manage to, to do the right thing of, of security or integrity. I so think this is in, this, in that crossroad that many er errors happen. So is that a, a result of poor procurement or is it a result from bad vendors? Or both? I mean, it doesn't have to be neither. I mean, it's, it's, I could actually be wrong, but I, I think that the, the 
performance has to be a li better to be lifted. And I think there is a problem where integrity issues or security issues come into the process too late. Because it's much, much, much tougher to fix it uh, down the road than fix it from the start. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been a problem in, in several of those, those uh, examples that you referred to. Yeah, and that is why we have this security by design and security by default, which is very, very, very good. Well, unless innovators think ahead and puts in safeguards, they cannot control how the technology they create will be used because, you know, everything can be used and abused. So, in, from a personal point of view, what is your biggest fear in this context of digitalization? What is the nightmare? Uh, oh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure I have a nightmare. I'm not, I'm not, not, not too fond of fears and nightmares, but uh, who are? But I think that that might be that we lose the trust of the citizens, that they lose the trust in the power of, of transition and digitalization. Because I think that's the, the main benefit we have in Sweden, that we have the, the trust of the people and the users. And I often hear from, from others, I mean, look at USA, they don't have the GDPR, they can move much faster in, in terms of data. Look at the Chinese, they don't have to ask anybody, they just can collect their data. But I think in the long run, uh, if they don't change this, both the United States and the China will um, be harmed by the, by the, the lack of, of uh, regulation. Because if they don't have the trust from the users, from the people, the people won't share the data. Even if you are an um, authoritarian state, you need the, the, some basic trust from the people and the user. Because people will otherwise find other ways to hide their data and hide their integrity from uh, the companies or the state. Or, or, or. So I think that the trust that we have it's a, um, a foundation to be, be, be uh, successful in digitalization. So I, I think I find myself a bit... What is the time limit here? <laughs> okay, thank we're, you so much. Very manual, <laughs> like <laughs> a paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then we go on for a while. That's very good. Uh, and how, what is your opinion? How do you think we in Sweden are driving the technological development? I mean, the political goal is to be the best in the world in digitalization or using the possibilities uh, with digitalization. Where we, do we stand if you have an outlook? I mean, you don't have to trust me. There's a lot of different indexes. I mean, recently Sweden was put as number one as the mo most innovative country in the European Union. And if you look at different benchmarks of digitalization, we usually end up in the top three ranks. And for a country of 10 million people in the, in the north of, of Europe, I think that's, that's a really good places. But we have to run faster to not lag ahead. I mean, we always have to be, be, be running fast to be there in the top. But right now we are. And actually the last few years, our positions have become a little bit better in these international rankings. So, and w we do still know that we, despite the fact that we are on top of digitalization, we know that we have had only over the last year several uh, serious incidents leaking data of personal individuals in Sweden. So that would, in my opinion, bring, bring the scale down a bit, but we are not alone. That very comfortable. Every country lux from these uh, leakages in, in uh, serious ways. And, and you were pointing that out, we will harm uh, the trust with the citizens. But what is, what is the responsibility? How do you share the responsibility between the vendors and the, the procurer in, the, in uh, for instance, you have this health sector, which is very, very sensitive data. How could we make it even more clear to people that they are responsible and point that out in a way that they know if I go wrong here, I will, I will get hurt myself or I will have be punished? Obviously by punish them, but, yeah, but, but, but first, uh, and I think that will happen for those who, who doesn't uh, uh, 
obey the rules. But firstly, if you want to com compare different countries, you have to use the same scale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and then I think that's the, the international rankings too. They compare with the same scale and Sweden com comes up in the top, together with a, a, a couple of other countries, mm -hmm. which all also have uh, quite tr high trust among their, their um, citizens. But I think that, that um, the integrity issues and the security issues are they are vital, but they're coming inc increasingly more important uh, to, to keep up with the trust. And I think you, if you see these global companies, uh, they work more and more to, to either keep up the integrity or, or keep up the, the view of, of that they're, they're, they're fighting with in integrity. Yeah, that was also to my next question. How do you feel that the tech giants are taking care of this now? And I, I agree, they, they do a lot of effort to try to come over uh, the privacy part and the privacy issues. A lot of efforts, but still a long road to go because in their model, uh, there, there's, I think there's, there's too much of, of um, sharing uh, in, uh, integrity sensitive parts. I mean, if you look at, at some of those, those things that have come to public where they say that their data is anonymized, but that you could really easily uh, link that information to a, a special individual. And I think that shows that they have a, a long way to go yeah. to before they re really keep the, the, the user's integrity. And researchers know that in, in data collection, that is always a, a problem that you need to take care of. And with these massive volumes, it's become even worse. So, uh, well, is regulation the answer? Or is it trying to find, how do you really work with the industry to find ways to come across this? Do we have? Uh, I think regulation is one part. Regulation has to be the baseline, but we also have to work together with, with the companies to make them um, some, some kind of self-regulatory work as well. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't, manage to have this high profile against the user where we really could safeguard the user's integrity, they will in, in the long run, the, the companies will be the losers as well. And I think that the, sh the, the world evolves kind of quickly. So if and, uh, legislation typically evolves kind of slowly. So I think that if you have to have a baseline with, with legislation, but you also have to have the companies doing the work themselves. And we try to encourage them, and we also try, in a national level, of course, but also in the, in the European level and the global level, because some of this legislation is better done on the European uh, level. So what about, what about knowledge uh, and, and uh, skills with people? We at the Swedish Internet Foundation, we're running a site right now, with, which is called internetkunskap.se in Swedish, uh, and that is now taking care of the part of uh, privacy, and, and how to how to make sure that you can protect yourself the best way possible. How do you work with the public education in this case? I, I, I share that education is important, and I, I, I really think you're doing a great work, and I think a lot of schools are doing a great work. But on the other hand, to keep yourself safe on the internet shouldn't be about having a very high education level because you should be safeguarded by the user agreements and legislation in the first hand. Sad enough, uh, is, uh, today that isn't always the case. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's, even if education is important, I think the, uh, our assumption should be that we could have a legislation and, and user agreements that safeguards the user. Yeah, and technical parts as mm -hmm. well. Coming from the internet, um, pioneering crowd. Uh, I'm very much about openness and transparency and when you have an incident you openly report it to tell others and educate others don't do the same mistake. How do you how do you look at this? I mean most of the time now the incident reports go to one of the agencies and it stays there and nothing comes out from it. No learning, not you know to everybody else in the same situation with the same environment, same platforms, whatever. How could you change that? I mean, we, we reformed the law 
so that yeah. you have to, to if you're a, a public agency, you have to report, uh, report yes. it. Yeah. That's a, one of the changes I, I took when I was Minister of, of Home Affairs. At the same time, we have, we have several sectors of society that are really not too eager to, to uh, tell about the mistakes that have been done. I, mean, the, I, th I think the banking and the, the insurance industries has been the, the toughest to, to, to deal with in, the, in this sense, because they feel that if they report, the trust of their services will be, be lesser mm -hmm. and that they will have a problem to build it. And we really have to, to work together with them to, to say that I mean, everybody will have attacks, everybody will have faults and frauds, and, and um, we have to use the information that you have to help others, and we have the information that others have to help you. In the long run, that will build the, build the trust uh, safe, um, higher, not lower, yeah. from, the, from the consumer. So we can take a good example from the flight industry, for instance. Yes. Um, but, we, but as I, I told, we, we, we started this in the European level, we also have in the private sector uh, more and more sectors that you really have to report their, uh, their incidents. So I think the, the tendency is clear and we have to work a little bit more intensive with some sectors. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much.